I do. If it could get out that nine ten range, if they sneak in as the seven seed, I guess you wouldn't sneak in. If they berate their way, you know, like push their way through to the seven seed, what an improbable finish to the season! Wow. And then how you're feeling? Well, I mean, I, I, then how if the Warriors sneak in as a seven seed and they're playing Minnesota in the first round, I'm with Bay Rob. I'm with Devontae Mississippi. Shocking. I'm on the trade, baby, and saying the Warriors can go on. They can go do some things. And it's going to be fascinating, to your point, Minnesota versus Denver. Like, who are they going to face and stuff like that? There's right. so many things to shake out. This is what the NBA and Adam Silver envisioned they when they had the plan. They did. They wanted this chaos. They like, did. the East is garbage. Like, the Haw- like we've known, like, the crappy Hawks have been in for yes. a while. It is a gauntlet in the West more so than ever this year. It is pretty wild. Like, yep. that's it's awesome. So- and they're rooting for... Either Steph or LeBron to be in that seven so, eight spot, yep. and then the other to be in that because they want yep. both of them to advance. Give no me doubt. your your Laker point of view regarding the conversation Warrior fans are having this morning with seeds and whatnot. Like, what do you mean? Like, like, like is how does this sound absurd? No, I mean this is what every like this is what because I think Lakers fans and Warriors fans realize because they have LeBron and Steph. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Give me the Thunder or the Timberwolves, and I'll take my chances. I kind of I think you, that's yeah. where they're at. Yep. I would rather play the Timberwolves than the Thunder. Now, do you feel the Lakers fear the Lakers in a play scenario? Not as much as I thought I, I know did. So, I know some people. I know some people uh, wanted the Warriors to punt the game yesterday. Well, I'm glad they didn't. And ah. considering what happened with the Kings, aren't we really glad they didn't? Now, you could go even a step further and say, "Boy, it would have been great to have won that Friday night game against the Dallas Mavericks." But whatever, that that's happened. It's in the past. I'm glad they played that game. I feel significantly better in terms of team chemistry, ball movement, defense, uh, just the way everyone's playing. Like I told you before, B matchups. Like we could pick, isolate all these different games. Is the team playing good basketball together? And I feel like defensively they are. I feel like offensively they are. Yesterday, that late third quarter surge from the second unit was very inspiring. Yeah. Seeing the first quarter unit put up a good lead and, and, and seeing Steph and Clay. I mean, look at the stats, just the overall point totals from all the starters. How can you not feel great? Well, Steph and Clay could buy for 50 points. And they combined to go 11 to 16 from the three point line. Vintage Splash so, Bros. So, you know, we could, I'm not going to get into the clay stuff today. Just saying he's playing very, very good he's basketball. Playing amazing. Amazing basketball. And he had a couple of nice um, so, takes to the lane. Uh, he had a pass to TJD uh, that was brilliant. So he's been question. really good. So, you know, call me a fool, but I've been tricked again by Killer Clay. Somebody texted in last week saying, hey, man, you tricked. You got tricked, man. That's just the Rockets. Well, then you hear it's just the Jazz. Well, is it just the Lakers? I don't know. Now, Michael Thompson did join Willard Dibbs. I want to get into that at some point. Some interesting sound there. But Killer Clay is on a heater right now. Yeah, he looks great. All right. His legs look so fresh. Dude, the guy, the guys, Clay's fine. He's going to get his $30 million per year from somebody. And we'll, we'll be talking about that all offseason. But 27 points. You get Steph Curry going 7-9, 6-6 six to six on the three-point line. First time he's got perfect on at least six three-point attempts since 2010. 23 points for uh, Steph. Eight assists, seven rebounds. You get Trayvon Green, scored 15, all 15 from the three-point line. You get Andrew Wiggins, as you mentioned. He scores in double figures. You get CP3 playing the old man game with the big. And that was the biggest key to me. Not the 16-2 run. 16-2 run uh, in the second mm-hmm. quarter. Obviously, what? they got separation. But I was disappointed at the half in this sense. Lakers were only down 11. That's what I'm saying. They cut it to five? Right, they, cut it to was, fi- they cut it to five. Four. Was I it four? Okay, four. I, thought it was, I, knew, I knew it was like close to five but, late in the third quarter. Yeah, but 423 left. Okay. Steve Kerr checks out Steph, uh-huh. Dre, and GP2. It's 90 to 84. It felt very on the, on the like, edge. Uh-oh, yeah. Lakers have all the momentum. Would you Kirkland call it the Calvary danger the, zone? The danger zone. I would agree danger with zone. that. And next thing you know, a 16-5 run. You got a little bit of CP3. You got some pods. Even got JK hitting the three yes. during that stretch where he started to fill his rhythm, yeah. to fill his game. And that's sure you know you go in the fourth quarter of 17 and you feel good. Now the Lakers did score the first nine in the fourth quarter. We thought, oh, here we go again. Another blow, double to lead. But that didn't happen because Steph started hitting. CP3 started hitting. And the Warriors go 26 of 41 for the three point line. I mean, what a night down in LA. And it makes you think if they could just get in. They're 16 to 4 in their last 20 row games. If they could just get in. In because again, that was the first time they had been really healthy since the game against the Chicago mm-hmm. Bulls. And then 
before that was November 28th. I liked that he went with CP3 in this game. You had a lead, and you kind of took the air out of the basketball, slowing it down, down the stretch, you know, executing in the half court, getting the ball to Steph and CP3. No silly turnovers. We're going we're gonna to run a methodical play here. We're going to get a really good look. It just felt... It felt like whatever was happening earlier in this year in terms of blown leads and erratic offensive half-court production late in games when things slow down, they've kind of stabilized some of that fourth-quarter stuff. And they ran particular – again, I keep going back to pick-and-rolls. They ran some high pick-and-rolls for Steph at, like, perfect times where he just walked into open threes, and he was just – he was hitting last night. I thought, <laughs> the, the, the 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 numbers don't pop off at you because right. they're classic Steph numbers. I thought he was amazing. Last oh, he was night. he was a, the, the, amazing. The, the pass of Clay Thompson. He was in command. He, he was, was showtime Steph. yesterday. He was showtime yesterday. Just not. He scored twenty three points on nine shots. And we talked about <laughs> his efficiency. Incredible. I mean, twenty three points incredible. on nine shots. You could try to do I mean, that in an empty gym, right? Eight eight rebounds, seven assists, thirty two minutes and nineteen seconds. And you saw the playoff rotation. Here's the playoff rotation, folks. You got your starters. TJD, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, the Splash Brothers. Did your first four off the bench? GP2, Kaminga, Chris Paul, Brandon Pajipski. All right, Moses Moody, there's going to be an odd man out here. Yeah. It's just, it is what it is. But Moses Moody will stay ready because he will need to be ready. There's a game where somebody's going to get in foul trouble. There's a game where somebody may limp off the floor. Moses Moody will be needed. And I wouldn't close the book on Kavon Looney down a stretch here. I would not. This is the Kevon flip, Looney. The flip side to Loon Dog is I know he was struggling this season. But now he's off to the side working out. Now he's going to have fresh legs here. And everybody can laugh at that if you want to. But if you do run into Carl Anthony Towns, if you do run into Nas Reed, if you do run into Anthony Davis, you're going to have to dust off Loon Dog at some point to still five to ten minutes in the game. The, the flip side to Looney getting all these DMPs and not playing, I'm sure he wants to play. He's a competitor. He's a warrior. A true warrior in the sense of the word warrior. He will be needed at some point, and I think his legs will be fresh. In a way, Shasky, this is a blessing in disguise for Kaval Looney because I do think the Warriors are going to have to dust him off at some point. And I'm just saying 30 minutes. I'm not saying even 20 minutes, but situational basketball. You may have to guard Jokic for a couple of possessions. You may have to guard Nurkic for a couple of possessions. You may have to guard Valanciunas for a couple of possessions. Looney will be needed. Moody will be needed. So I wouldn't focus in. This is a playoff rotation, though. There's going to be some odd man out, and it is what it is. When you win the way you did yesterday, I, I think the last thing that comes to my mind is worrying about Moody's minutes and where he fits in. Everything worked out fine yesterday, man. It looks really good. I, I want to get back to the TJD Draymond Green uh, setup. I do feel like their defense has completely flipped since they've gone to that lineup. No doubt. Having the funneler, having the guy who could protect the rim, and he's not the biggest dude. I know he's thick and he was six nine. I mean, it's humongous by normal standards, NBA standards. Not a traditional center, but he gets up off the ground, and his timing on these blocks and his ability to block a shot without fouling. He's been a he's been a revelation. I think what it has done is it allowed other guys to yep. not worry about getting blown by, and I think it's made teams second guess attacking the rim when he blocks a couple shots in a row, uh, and then like Draymond Green being able to roam the way that he has. That lineup has changed things yep. for them. No, it has, and the spacing's there. You got the shooters with the Splash Brothers. You have great screeners True. in TJD and Draymond Green, and it allows Wiggins to have more space to operate in. Yeah. Now you break up him and Kaminga, although that combination was working. You break up him and Kaminga, so now Wiggins has more space to operate. When he wants to go to the mid post, when he wants to go to the post, and he has that little baby jump yes. hook, yes. that's right there. I still want to see the Pity Hardaway step back. I don't think he's used that enough eh, this we season. Seen that we often. haven't seen that a lot for the mid range. And, and they got the foot. little alley to TJD a yep, couple times. No doubt. So this, this is working. And then you bring in CP3. <laughs> I can't get enough of Chris Paul. I really can't. And then you get Clay Thompson rolling off. You got Pajewski back in his groove. Get yeah, Pajewski the last five games. These guys are going to make well, all rookie teams. He, I mean, it, it, how fascinating is that? I thought Pajewski was going to be in Santa Cruz for most of the season. Most of the season. TJD, I didn't. What? Remember when I was, like, you and I were po oh, pining for him early in the year? And right. It felt kind of like a pipe dream. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, I was, I was telling you, I was like, I don't know about Pajewski. Oh, he's been way year. better than any he of us could have all anticipated. expectations. Yeah, way better. The CP3 is interesting. Last year, turnovers were a huge problem. Synergy, second unit, stabilizing it, just the flow, the rhythm. 
It was the live ball and unforced turnovers that were driving everyone mad. Yep. It was Jordan Poole attacking the rim, getting blocked at the rim, and then, boom, giving up a layup in the other direction. The team giving up a layup. There was one play where Andrew Wiggins, they had Kaminga on the right, he had right. Andrew Wiggins on his left, and Andrew Wiggins went to the hoop, and he thought he was going to pop out for like a fade mm -hmm. uh, to the corner, and he threw it away. And CP3 went, ah, and he came right. over here, and he talked yep. with Wiggins, and they, yep. they got on the same pitch, and everyone was nodding their head. And then he turned to Kaminga, and he was explaining to Kaminga what he wanted on the next one. And then the very next possession comes down, and boom, he hits yep. Wiggins, simple little layup. That's the difference between this year and last year. Yep. And, and, and I'm not trying to rip Jordan no, Poole. No, I want to make sure. It's, it, but CP3 is a seasoned veteran. No, he is. He's, he calms everybody down. He stabilizes everybody. You see, you see it in the San Antonio game with pods. He's talking to him every dead ball. Look for this. Look yeah. for it. He's always coaching. Yeah, he is. He's bringing the ball up the floor. He's telling people to swing. He's got the gamesmanship, man. This guy is hooping right now. CP3 is really playing well. So uh, I, I'm really impressed he with what he's well done with the Curry. Warriors. He plays well with Curry. He plays well with Klay Thompson. Yeah. He plays well with TJD. Well, I mean, Clay was in the, that second unit. With the well, 65 it was the majority, run. The yeah. end of the third quarter. And he, he was cooking. The second unit. It was CP3, Clay, Pods. Yes. He had a little bit of Kamiga. They were rolling right now. They're, they are absolutely rolling. Love where they're excited at. excited we are. No, I'm, I'm fired up about this game. What I know about somebody says play. to you, somebody says to you, well, Anthony Davis didn't play, and the Lakers are a garbage team. Uh, like, is, doesn't the form of the Warriors matter more than the opponent? It matters to me more. Absolutely. The chemistry? Absolutely. Getting the rotations right. Getting the chemistry right. Getting your starting unit right. Figuring out game by game who's going to close it. In the fourth quarter, you saw Kamiga was out there yeah. with CP3, Wiggins, Draymond, Curry. So Clay wasn't even really in in that fourth quarter. Not that much. So you know what, man? It's, uh, I, I feel really good about this team right now. I, I was listening to Stanley and Guru yesterday, all these calls. And they won yesterday, and I saw a guru's tweet, and I heard your voice. I could hear your voice through the text messages. You're excited about it. Spadoni's down in the dumps. I could hear him well, on the pregame show. Shut I up. Mean, you want to talk to someone ripping referees? LeBron was crying. Well, he, that's what because he does. Because he played at seventy percent. You know the nobility, been. and I mean, look that's at just, look at the valor of LeBron fighting through seventy percent health. I got some LeBron sound. I mean, he's thirty nine years old. Right. He's doing things you've never seen. Before. No, he's incredible. Yeah, no, but, 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 but you don't have to tell me. You're suited up, dog. We know you're. They out asked there. him the questions. He's I'm seventy percent, not eighty. You guys just don't like what he has to say. No, 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 no. You got flu-like systems, you're sick. Why are you holding court in front of media members? You're going to get everybody sick. sick. That. How about you go to the trainer's room and get your medicine and go home? Like, straight up. That's on them. You want to be a professional and talk? That's now you're getting that. Dave McMahon sick. He's not going to be able to Dave work on ESPN for the next three Dave days. Dave McMahon would be like, it's an honor to have LeBron get me sick. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Bob Mike Buha. Gollum. Joe Bob Buha's got to wear a mask because LeBron's sick. Man, nah, go I home. You're sick. He's one of the uh,